This video is sponsored by Appeals. Okay. Hello, my name is Peter, and today we are starting here, underneath the table, because that's where I am. Now, over to you, by the wall. Hey, good to be here. Shout out to you, uh, Peter. I'm, I'm actually the real Peter, but... Shout out to all the viewers, watchers, fans, and loved ones out there across the world and into the cosmos. It's good to be on camera here finally. That's right. This is the wall where we are going to put the finished product today. This is the piece we drew in the first appeals video, the iPhone appeals. Uh, I mean, what was it? iPhone? Yeah, iPhone. Yeah, it was. There we go. I had it. Right there, right? And then we drew this bumper sticker. Pretty nice. Now the winners of the giveaway we did for the bumper sticker are, boom, right here. Congratulations to those people. Very, very nice. Well done. Enjoy those bumper stickers. You don't have to put it on your bumper, but I won't stop you. So that's right. Right now, we're going to draw a picture with a bunch of cool lines, probably. Uh, if I know anything about the drawing, Peter, that will go right here. And it'll, you know how it goes, if the, either of these drawings are any indication. All right, back to you, other Peter. I have to sneeze under here. Let's go up. I feel like I can pull these off today. I can do it. Usually I let mannequin head here wear these sunglasses and I resort to a little, something a little less exciting like these numbers here. But today, no, it's these. Let's do it. And that's uh, as we mentioned, we're going to be drawing a big picture, which is going to take me about 10 hours. And I say that in a sense that isn't strictly... Uh, linear in a chronological sense because I have already drawn this picture. That's how I know it's going to take me about 10 hours using the Peter pen. This is a drawing I'm going to do in the outline of an iPad appeals I have here printed out on the paper. But uh, even if you don't have one, I'm going to upload it on all sorts of different things. And I have hundreds of different products already uploaded there on the appeals website if you want to shop. And of course, there's already some people who have started doing this. You can upload your own designs there on Appeals if you want to uh, monetize your own art a little bit. You can make a creator account and um, have other people buy stickers of your artwork. It doesn't even have to be drawing. Some people do like photographs, you know, got cool stuff here, even just um, cool patterns and stuff people make. This one here is really cool. I like that. Some sugar skull type of things. <coughs> We are also going to do a giveaway of five of these designs I'm about to draw. So if you want to enter that, the, the code word, the link is in the, in the description, and you're going to need the code word, which is kazoo, K-A-Z-O-O. -O. Kazoo is the code word for the giveaway. Link in the description. And... There's also a 20% site-wide discount going right now on appeals till the end of April, I believe. So check it out. Now let's get to draw. Oh, one other thing in other news. There is this company. It's actually a GIF keyboard company. It's a company which runs a GIF keyboard. I don't know how familiar you are personally with GIF keyboards and how they work. It's personally a little bit confusing for me because there's so many different platforms and ways in which we communicate these days, whether it's texting or messaging on Discord or Facebook or sending each other postcards. Some things allow gifts, some things don't, so on and so forth. But if you're smart enough to figure out how to use the Tenor GIF keyboard, look 
at all these gifts they have made out of my videos. All right. They've made hundreds of gifts about every week or so. They email me. They're like, hey, we, they just go out through my like most recent videos and they're like, hey, we made some more gifts and they asked me to approve of them. Like if they, it's OK if they add them to their gift keeper. I'm like, yeah, I like approve of all of them. I just say, yeah, they look hilarious or whatever. Now, it's probably a little bit self-centered of me. But if you want to use reactions of my face, check it out. Um, but I thought I would make it a little bit easier on them and I guess anyone else who wants to make GIFs if you know how to do that. And I think I will now rattle off a series of um, exaggerated expressions which could be made into GIFs. Or you can just watch. And then, we shall draw. Uh. Yeah, I'm calm on the outside. But to say calm waters run deep, whatever that means. But I know deep water builds pressure and I feel like something got to blow soon. I got that weird kind of tinnitus where I just hear screaming in my head. Yeah, I'm crazy on the inside. Probably normal though. Couldn't imagine being perfectly adjusted to everything that happens. Every day's the first time I lived it. Every day's another day to spit it. I should start doing yoga. I should start working out. But what's the point of mowing a lawn you don't play in? What's the point of breaking the leaves? What's the point of washing my car in my driveway or shaving my face? Except in the hopes of maybe getting a girlfriend one day. I shaved my face my whole life and I'm still alone. Round and round on the carousel, born dizzy, it's a matter of perspective. A circle is a line, equidistant from a point, but there's no truly straight lines, no round circles. Does anything matter if nothing's really purple? Or green, orange, chartreuse, puce. Right, and hello, I'm sitting here on my back porch to record this right now. The sun is shining. It feels beautiful. It's one in the afternoon. I've just eaten a breakfast. I don't know why I said eaten. Eaten. Eaten a breakfast. I had a salad and a yogurt, a, a blueberry yogurt for breakfast, along with a glass of uh, cold brew coffee. I hope the, uh, hope the, yeah, I hope the audio quality, I think, I think it should sound okay out here on the back porch, but let me know. And I'm watching a bee buzz around. It's one of those bees that I think like burrows into the wood, a carpenter bee, but thankfully it's not too close to me. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with bees. I think it's mostly just because I haven't been stung by one recently. I think if I had had a, a more recent uh, traumatic experience with a bee, then I would have a bigger problem with them. Uh, when I was little, I got stung by a bee that lived in the doorknob of our screen door. Oh no, I see a wasp now. Maybe this is why I don't come outside more often. I do come outside actually twice a day to walk, but I, I keep moving. It's when I sit down that things seem to gather more closely around me. And the, Oh no, now the wasp is very close. Oh, that's a yellow jacket. Oh no, it's buzzing. I'm just going to try to power through. Anyways, what I'm going to say now is under the assumption that I've titled this video in a certain way, um, and that could change because I do change my video titles sometimes either before or sometime after they're uploaded. What I'm going to say now is under the assumption that I have titled this video something along the lines of, um, what if you had to draw a cat and you didn't know anything about cats? All right, that's just a, th a shower Oh, that bee is so close. That's like a shower thought I I had, okay? Because if someone told you, and and, and it kind of comes along after someone, I saw a picture that someone posted online, like of, of some like medieval drawings or paintings of cats, of poorly, poorly drawn, poorly painted cats. And there, the caption was like, this person has never seen a cat before or something. And it was like, yeah, maybe they've never seen a cat before, but... 
mean, I think they probably had seen a cat before, and or maybe it was just a long time ago, or maybe they were just bad at painting cats or animals. I mean, the the humans in those paintings weren't terribly well or ac- well done or accurate either. I'm inclined to think that if you had to draw a cat and you'd never seen one, uh, that it would look much worse. I'm assuming by saying that if you'd never seen a cat, you'd also never seen drawings or paintings of cats either. Uh, this this hornet is really enthralled by my d- deck umbrella that I have folded up here. It's sitting right in front of me. It's like Maybe it's like a huge flower. Maybe that's why it likes it. Or maybe it's warm and colorful. Anyways, but look, if you had to draw a cat and you'd never, and you didn't know anything about cats, you wouldn't really know where to start, would you? If you didn't know what a cat was, what a cat wasn't, my my hypothesis, my what I'm saying here is that I could hypothetically be drawing a perfectly accurate drawing of a cat right here in this drawing that you're looking at right now. And then you might be saying, but Peter, Peter, what, what you're drawing doesn't even look like anything. It doesn't even look like an animal. Oh, the, oh, the bug is close. It just bizz bizzed me. I see there are at least four different types of buzzing things around me right now. It makes me uncomfortable. Now I see why I don't. I like the warmth and the sunlight of being out here, but I don't like the buzz buzzing of things near me. And there's a spider on the table in front of me now. Uh, But look, first of all, if you don't know anything about a cat, you wouldn't even know it was an animal. Okay, but... I'll grant you, maybe it is an animal. But even if you did know it was an animal, there are ways of accurately drawing and portraying an animal. Let's take a step back. Even if you did know what a cat was, there are ways of accurately drawing or uh, portraying a cat, maybe, that you wouldn't recognize as a cat. For example, maybe taking a a cat scan, a CT scan of a cat, like a slice of it. It could be very accurate, detailed, and intricate, uh, but you might not immediately recognize it as a cat. And it could even be more intricate and accurate than even most drawings or pictures of a cat you've ever seen. Oh no, now the hornets and bees are fighting each other. I'm very uncomfortable, actually. Also, we're pretty accustomed to looking at everything in a certain wavelength, like the, our visible light spectrum, right? Isn't there some kind of uh, shrimp in the ocean that can see in 50 times more colors than we can see or something? Maybe it would see a cat in totally different ways than we would, but maybe if we saw a cat in the way this shrimp does, we wouldn't immediately say that was a cat. Or what if we just shifted around on the electromagnetic spectrum? What if we went up or down in the electromagnetic spectrum and see how a cat is portrayed in microwaves or radio, radio, radio waves, radio, radio waves? Maybe it, the cat would look totally different. We're just look used to looking at cats in one tiny, narrow, little version of reality, the visible light spectrum or X-rays. I guess we could we've seen cats in X-rays before, gamma rays. I don't know how it would look. But anyways, another thing I'm trying to say here is that, anyways, I've kind of gotten lost in what I was trying to say here, but this isn't one of the, what I was trying to say is this isn't one of the biggest arguments for the existence of aliens, is that just since the universe is so big, like the diameter of the universe, some people say, uh, scientists, is that the di- if the diameter of the universe is like 93 billion light years or whatever, there's just such a big chance that out there so many things could happen, right? This is kind of like a, you know, monkeys at a typewriter sort of approach. Like, just give enough chances for enough things to happen. There's a, Eventually, some things have got to pop up. Eventually, other life forms have got to exist somewhere, right? That's like one of the, one of the thought experiments is that there's got to be something out there somewhere. Aliens. By that same logic, some of the aliens might look exactly like what I'm drawing right here. 93 billion light years is way, way bigger than 
anything any of us can imagine or pretend to imagine. And there's a lot more going on. Well, probably most of it is just empty space, but I don't know. If there are aliens, none of us can say what any of them look like or don't look like. So in the same way that if you didn't know anything about a cat, you couldn't say that what I'm drawing here is or isn't a cat. Um, you couldn't say that I am or am not completely accurately drawing some distant um, unknown life form perfectly. Does my shower thought make sense to anyone? No? I feel like if you think about a shower thought for long enough, kind of like how if, if you look at a, any like word for long enough on a piece of paper, or if you say any word over and over again, it stops thinking, seeming like a word. I feel like I had that experience with this, with this shower thought where I, I thought about it for so long it stopped making sense and then it started making sense again. Let me try to restate it. If you don't know anything about what a cat or some unknown being out in the universe is, if you don't know anything about what it is, you also don't know anything about what it isn't, and therefore you can't tell me that I'm not perfectly accurately portraying it here on the paper today, especially if there's so many different ways of portraying something. If you're just looking at it from the left side, or if you're ta taking a CAT scan of it, or if you're looking at it through one of the million different wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum, or if you're looking at it after it's been run over by a steamroller, it's still accurate. It's just really flat. Anyways, tell me if that made any sense. If, if that made even 2% sense to anyone else out there, I would be happy. And I think I'm going to go for a walk now, since the bugs seem to bother me less. I do like being outside, but the bugs, bugs bother me less when I'm walking instead of sitting on the deck. And also, it also seems to help a little bit when it's breezy, because tiny insects seem to have a little bit more trouble uh, keeping up when there's a little bit of a breeze. They just have, seem to have to hunker down. Um, yeah, they, the, the, the wind carries them away or something. I don't know. If, if there's like a heavy wind and the bug is in the air, do they just get carried over to the next county? They have to work their way back or do they, then, do they just live there? Or wait till the wind blows them back this way, or I don't know. Maybe they can fight against the wind hard enough. I'm watching a spider string a web down from the table to the deck now. It looks like it's floating, but I know, I know it's probably not. I think. Oh no, I can see the string now. I can see its gossamer strand. Okay, I'm gonna go now. The bugs are getting, the, uh, the bugs are getting bigger and closer. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Wow, that was a really nice drawing. Well done. Good lines. Good grip strength. Posture in the hand. Some in the wrist. Some in the elbow. Shoulders. Good job. I do have here the finished product. Look at that iPad Pro 12.9 inch appeals. But like I always say, you can just stick it on the wall if you want. And that's what we're gonna do right now. I wish I had a third hand. Just gonna peel it off. Let me bring the camera closer. And then we're, we're gonna put it right here. All right, check it out. I'll try to get an angle without too much glare. That's what we've got so far. It's kind of bugging me a little, so I'm actually gonna get the the little camera cover since we don't actually need. There we go. Nice. We are two. I mean, three fifths of the way done with this little project. And uh, it's just going to keep getting better. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm happy with how this one turned out. Go grab one of your own. This design is available on lots of different appeals, not just iPad ones, by the way. So check it out in the description. Have a good day, everyone. Real Peter.
checking out, signing out, signing off, clocking out.